Well, welcome to this week's bushel up. Uh, kind of a special, uh, I don't want to call it an emergency edition, but but it is kind of that. And, uh, you know, I hate to bring bad news, uh, so I brought Becca along to help deliver some of the bad news. We've got Becca Banks from Corteva here, and uh, we really want to talk about corn disease and what we're seeing. And unfortunately, we have the triple crown going on, and normally that's a good thing. Uh, we think, you know, three is a, is a good number, but in the case of diseases right now, uh, not only do we have gray leaf spot, but but we've got southern rust showing up really bad. Um, in fact, it is right here. We just stand by one corn plant, and you can see we've already got southern rust starting up here. Um, and this is a field that's been treated, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, we've got tar spot continuing to be confirmed in county after county in Nebraska. It's safe to assume um, it's it's where it's been before, and uh, so that's what we're up against. You know, the gray leaf spot, tar spot, and southern rust. And, and Becca, just talk about, you know, the timing of these diseases and what you're seeing out there. Yeah. When we think about diseases, the yield impact that comes is from when we see them earlier in the season, because right now is a really critical time in that corn plant's life. We've got it transferring into that reproductive phase right now, hopefully getting excellent pollination. And when we stress that plant out and start removing that much photosynthetic material, we've got these leaves out here and we start hitting it with disease after disease after disease we start to stress that plant and we can see significant yield limiting impact with this. Normally in Nebraska, we see disease with Southern rust move in in late parts of August into September. And when we see Southern rust flare up that late in the season, that impact on yield is not, uh, not usually significant, but to see it this early and in this often, I mean, nearly every field we're walking into in our corn on corn areas, we're seeing Southern rust, especially as it, as it moves in from the South other challenge I see is look at the forecast, right? Yep. We have the next two weeks forecast that we see out is hot and windy, which is excellent for moving those spores, even if you've not traditionally had well, southern you, rust. You think about the last couple days, I've been out with our drone crews, kind of getting them kicked off in the morning. Scouting fields, we've had very dewy, it's still wet. Uh, yesterday it was still wet until uh, 11 o'clock in the morning in yep. the grassy areas. Uh, we've had some fog days and, and all those things move disease around. And, and what concerns me is normally we don't see disease until after everything's infected and it's, it's already moved. Uh, it, it all of a sudden starts showing itself. So um, just because you're not seeing it doesn't mean it's not there. Uh, we got to check fields regularly. Uh, I've been watching this field and, and like I say, we just now I come out this morning, I find southern rust. Uh, a week ago, I didn't, couldn't find any out here. So things change rapidly. Um, you know, I, I think back to 2006, I believe it was, when we had a bad uh, southern rust year, it came in early, and you'd be driving down the interstate and you could just see like fields were froze. Uh, the whole plants died prematurely. Uh, that impacts your test weight, that impacts uh, you know, standability at harvest. That's, uh, nobody likes picking down corn, and, and that definitely shuts that plant down early. So we've got a long ways to go, so talk about that. You know, I know uh, some guys aren't gonna be happy to hear this, but the reality is, we're spraying fungicide now. Um, it may not get us through the whole year, right? With southern rust and some of the pressure we have. Absolutely. I mean, we think a lot in a lot of years we're able to have a, have one fungicide application carry us through the year. But every fungicide that's on the market today, even even some of our premium ones, will tell you with southern rust and tar spot, it's retreat after 14 days. So it's something that we need to be looking at and thinking and preparing for. That it's it's realistic world that we might have fields that we have to treat multiple times. So you know, be aware. You got to keep scouting these fields, even though you put a fungicide on. Um, it really concerns me. I mean, it's July 24th. Uh, we've got to keep this crop alive till September 15th. And so it's going to be a battle. Um, I don't like bringing this news. I'm not a scare tactic guy. Um, I prefer, uh, you know, that you can keep your money in your pocket. But the conditions we have are unlike any other that we've seen. I know, uh, you know, I'm hearing it from crop consultants, from our industry partners like mm -hmm. Becca and Mark and, and the guys out there in the field. Uh, we're seeing a lot of pressure and it, it's widespread and you think about the conditions it's just what we've kind of inherited from mother nature this year so beyond that um, i know some guys are choosing to try and wait because they're hoping to extend that backside uh, residual uh, my concern is we we don't want to be impacting this crop now there's two things out there that are going on that make us saving as much green tissue as possible uh, important and one of those is we have a lot of bacterial leaf streak and so there's nothing we can do about bacterial leaf streak, but it's taken a lot of our green tissue away. 
Uh, so that makes it doubly important that we protect uh, from disease and, and losing more green tissue. Uh, and then we've had some hailed and some stripped up fields that maybe we've lost some, some material out there. But this is our solar panel. Um, the other thing that's really starting to make me uh, concerned is a lack of sunlight. We've got hazy days, cloudy days, and so our solar radiation is reduced. Uh, we, we've got to have as much healthy plant out here as we possibly can. Uh, those factors all combined together can, can take us into a bad place uh, if, if we don't manage them. So uh, reach out if you got any help, uh, want any help looking at your fields. Uh, we're really trying to keep as many guys out in fields as we can to, to help you. Uh, you know, we don't want to shoot blindly. We want to make sure we have a reason to, to go apply something. Um, but I know Becca um, has been out in a lot of fields. So any, any closing thoughts you have on, on where we're at this year? No, I just, I, I look, it's, it's not a fun thing to think about multiple fungicide applications, but the benefits you get are great. When we thought, think about this heat that's coming up, all of our fungicides that we're applying are also gonna help conserve moisture. They're gonna help relieve, that, relieve stress from that plant and be able to set us up for good yields at the end of the day, because there is some really good looking corn out there and we need to do everything we can to protect it. Yeah, I agree. There's there's good potential out there, but it's gonna it's, it's gonna be a fight to the end, just like last year. We really had to fight with irrigation. It was a battle all year long. Uh, I see that with disease being our, our challenge this year. That we're just gonna have to keep fighting all the way to the end, uh, make it to the finish line here. So, any questions? Please reach out. Uh, we'll be glad to help.